loops in Swift 3. Occasionally, in your programs, you need to perform some kind of action multiple times over multiple pieces of data. And rather than calling some function again and again and again, loops allow you to do that in just a few lines of code. So let's see how these loops work and all the different kinds that we have in Swift 3 by implementing them in our playground. The very first and most basic loop is available in most languages and it is called the for loop. So let's write one. Let's start with for var i in zero dot dot less than 10, open curly braces and close them. And inside of here, let's have print i. Now what this loop is doing is it's creating a variable called i and it's assigning the numbers 0, etc. to i. That's what for var i in 0 to 10 means. Every time the loop goes round, i is 0, then i is 1, then i is 2, all the way until i is less than 10. So i is going to reach the number 9, it's going to go from 0 to 9, but never get to the number 10, because that's the condition we've specified. And we've said each time you go round, I would like you to print i out. And that's why over on the right we see 10 times. And if I open up my i icon, we have the number 9, which is what i currently is. So this is the basic for loop. Now, if you've programmed a Swift before, you might have done it a slightly different way. And this is the way that's recognized languages the world over, where we would have a for var i equals naught. We would have a semicolon until i is less than 10. And then we have an i plus plus, which adds one to i. And inside there, we'd have a print statement or whatever we needed. But notice how Swift 3 quickly throws an error. And it tells us C style for statement has been removed in Swift 3. And it suggests the version that we implemented just above it. So if you come across web tutorials and they recommend this for statement, it will not work. Let's delete it from our memories right now. Right, so when would you use a for statement? Well, if you had an array of stuff and you wanted to go through each item and print it off or do some addition to it or whatever you wanted, that's where for loops really come into their own. Let's have a var called numbers, which is going to be an integer array. Let's have int is equal to a new integer array. And let's just pop in whatever numbers we wish to put in there. Now let's create a for loop. For variable n in numbers, open our braces, and then let's print n out. So this for loop is going to go through each number one by one in that array, starting from index zero, so for, and going through it element by element. So that's how you grab each element from an array. Then we have a different kind of loop, and this is called a while loop. So let's have a var, and actually before I do this, I'm just going to delete this so it's clear for you. Let's have var count is, is an integer, which is equal to naught. And this variable is going to keep count of our while loop. Then we have while count is less than 10. I would like you to perform the following actions. Print our count. And my laptop is starting to stutter here. And I'm going to tell you why. Look at this number on the side. This loop has gone round 
tens of thousands of times already. And you might say, why is it doing that? Well, it's doing that because this count is zero, which is always less than 10. And how do we get around that? Well, every time the while loop goes round, we have to add one to our count. Count plus equals one. And look at my spinning beach ball of death on my Mac. It's not quite catching up with itself. So I'm just gonna pause the video here and come back when it's fixed. And I've fixed it. So there, if you did the same as me, you've kind of had a mini, well, it's not a crash, but it's a place where your program gets stuck. And this area where it gets stuck is a problem that even experienced programmers like myself run into occasionally. So always check there is an exit condition for your while loops or your for loops or whatever loops you have. Okay, there is a final version of the loop that is called a repeat while loop, where we ask it to repeat a certain function. So let's have print something like not yet and add one to our count. And then we give it a while condition. So I want you to repeat that function while count is less than 10. And if I just remove this while loop, so count is zero, it should go round the repeat loop 10 times. And there we have it. So that's a repeat while. And the difference between a while loop and a repeat while is that the repeat performs the function first. So the while loop performs it as part of the loop itself.